Did you know there's been over 350 earthquakes reported around Mount St. Helens this year? And that's a substantial increase from previous years. My parents live in Ocean Shores, which is several hours away, right on the water actually, northwest of Mount St. Helens, and they felt an earthquake a few months ago. Pretty substantial one. So my question is, with the Earth's core slowing down substantially, there's even reports saying that the Earth's core has reversed. I'm gonna share that report with you in a minute. A lot of um, controversy about that, but I will share with you the white paper that was published through Nature. And behind me, you can see Mount Rainier exploding with magnificence. See, and that's another thing. Mount Rainier is a few hours away from Mount St. Helens. And the two mountains are majestic. They are incredible. They are magnificent. And Mount Rainier even still to this day keeps scientists up at night. Real quick, I just wanted to ask you a question. Have you got yours yet at don'twastepower.com? You can save some money and also cut down on dirty electricity. These devices are about the size of a garage door opener and you plug them in to an outlet next to your breaker box. The green light turns on and what it does basically is it cuts down on dirty electricity. It helps protect your appliances and electronics from dirty electricity and it helps save you money. So if you wanna save some money and quit giving the electrical company so much, you can buy these at don'twastepower.com, get the discount. It even has a money back guarantee. All right, let's jump back to the podcast. Halo. You're having a nice day so far. So as of June 22nd, 2024, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network has recorded about 350 earthquakes at Mount St. Helens, and this has been since February of this year. The majority of these earthquakes were less than a magnitude one and were too small to be felt at the surface. The large earthquake was a magnitude 2.0 that occurred May 31st, 2024. The earthquakes occurred at a median depth of about 3.5 miles below sea level, and that is approximately 4.6 miles below the crater floor. This is from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. You can go to pnsn.org, and you can look at all the volcanoes, the dates, the times. Looks like that there has been, just over the past couple of days, over 20 earthquakes. This article, Why Mount Rainier is the U.S. Volcano That Troubles Scientists Most. Pretty good read, CNN.com. There's other articles, other networks you can read it at also, but let's just look at this real quick. Mount Rainier, 2.7 miles above sea level in Washington, has not produced a significant volcanic eruption in the past thousand years. Yet more than Hawaii's bubbling lava fields or Yellowstone's sprawling supervolcano, it's Mount Rainier that has many U.S. volcanologists worried. Mount Rainier keeps me up at night because it poses such a great threat to the surrounding communities. Tacoma and South Seattle are built on 100-foot thick ancient mud flows from eruptions of Mount Rainier. Jess Phoenix, a volcanologist and ambassador of the Union of Concerned Scientists, said on an episode of Violent Earth with Liv Schreiber, the sleeping giant's destructive potential lies not only with fiery flows of lava, which in the event of an eruption would be unlikely to extend more than a few miles beyond the boundary of Mount Rainier National Park in the Pacific Northwest, and the majority of volcanic ash would likely dissipate downwind to the east, away from population centers. And this is according to the USGS, or the U.S. Geological Survey. What concerns scientists the most is lahars, or the prospect of a lahar, a swiftly moving slurry of water and volcanic rock originating from ice or snow rapidly melted by an eruption that picks up debris as it flows through valleys and drainage channels. The thing that makes Mount Rainier tough is that it is so tall and it's covered with ice and snow, and so if there's any kind of eruptive activity, hot stuff, will melt the cold stuff and a lot of water will start coming down, said Seth Morin, a research seismologist at USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. And there are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people who live in areas that potentially could be impacted by a large lahar and it could happen quite quickly. When it comes to rest, you've got this hardened, almost like concrete substance that can be quicksand-like when people are trying to get out of it. Bradley Pitcher, 
a volcanologist and lecturer in earth and environmental sciences at Columbia University, said in an episode of CNN's Violent Earth. Pitcher said Mount Rainier has almost eight times the amount of glaciers and snow as the Nevado del Ruiz when it erupted. There's the potential to have a much more catastrophic mud flow. In the U.S. Geological Survey's most recent threat assessment from 2018, the federal agency considered Hawaii's Kilauea the most hazardous U.S. volcano. No surprise given how many people live near it, how frequently it erupts. Mount St. Helens, which had a cataclysmic eruption in May of 1980, ranked as second most hazardous before Mount Rainier in third place. Now, the past eruptions, this is really interesting when you read about this, past eruptions reveal multiple mud flows. Lahars typically occur during volcanic eruptions, but also can be caused by landslides and earthquakes. Geologists have found evidence that at least 11 large lahars from Mount Rainier have reached into the surrounding area, known as the Puget Lowlands, in the past 6,000 years, Morin said. Scientists have not connected the most recent of these lahars, which occurred about 500 years ago, with any kind of volcanic activity. A large landslide on the mountain's west flank may have caused the flow event, according to researchers. Now, this is from USGS.gov. At around 14,410 feet, Mount Rainier, a snow-capped volcano in the Cascade Range, towers above the Puget Lowlands. March of this year, March 21st, more than 45,000 students and communities south of Seattle and west of Mount Rainier participated in the world's largest Lahar evacuation drill. Although the regional Lahar evacuation drill is held every two years, this year's was the largest ever. You had the East Pierce Interlocal Coalition Emergency Management Team coordinates the drill. They coordinated the drill with support from local government officials, school districts, first responders, emergency managers, volunteers, and state and federal agency, such as the U.S. Geological Survey students from Puyallup, Summer, Bonnie Lake, Ording, White River, and Carbonado, Washington, participated in the event. So a lahar is an Indonesian term that describes a mixture of mud, water, rock fragments, and debris that flows down the slopes of a volcano, typically entering a river valley. A moving lahar looks like a churning slurry of wet concrete as it rushes downstream. Lahars can travel quickly at hundreds of miles per hour on places like the steep slopes of Mount Rainier and tens of miles per hour through nearby villages. Lahars can be hundreds to thousands of feet tall and travel over 50 miles away from their starting point. Lahars are a common hazard found around volcanoes like Mount Rainier. They often occur during volcanic eruptions, but can also be caused by landslides and earthquakes. In the Cascade Range of the Pacific Northwest, smaller flows that do not travel far from a volcano are typically referred to as debris flows to distinguish them from larger and more dangerous lahars that can threaten communities far downstream. Lahars are common at Mount Rainier because its cap of snow and ice provides water when melted and parts of the upper flanks of the volcano contain abundant, loose, weak, hydrothermally altered rock. Now listen to this. The reason the lahars around Mount Rainier are concerning is because geologists have found evidence that at least 11 large lahars from Mount Rainier have reached into the surrounding area, known as the Puget Lowlands in the last 6,000 years. A recent USGS study estimated that over 90,000 people live within Mount Rainier Lahar hazard zones. Infrastructure damage in the surrounding areas can impact millions of people in the region. Therefore, evacuation drills prompt critical emergency preparedness, conversations within the outside the Lahar hazard zones. Think of the Ring of Fire also. The Ring of Fire is a 25,000 mile long, 500 kilometer or 310 mile wide approximately in certain areas surrounding most of the Pacific Ocean, containing between 750 and 915 volcanoes that are both active and dormant, around two-thirds of the world's total. About 90% of the world's earthquakes, including most of its largest, occur within the belt. When you look at the area, if there was an event to cause an increase in volcanic activity, possibly multiple volcanoes erupting at the same time in the area of the Ring of Fire or around the Pacific Northwest. Get pretty gnarly, pretty quick. And I'm thinking about the Earth's core. Now, this article is from CNN. The white paper, the science paper is from nature.com, or you can read it at nature.com. Inner core backtracking by seismic waveform change reversals. When you read through this, it describes how the scientists actually study 
the Earth's inner core and how they believe it slowed down so much it could potentially have reversed. They also link it to a 70-year cycle and explain how this happens every 70 years. I'll just read it to you real quick. The solid inner core, if it's even solid, suspended with the liquid outer core and anchored by gravity has been inferred to rotate relative to the surface of Earth or change over years to decades based on changes in seismograms from repeating earthquakes and explosions. It has a rich inner structure and influences the pattern of outer core convection and therefore Earth's magnetic field. So they admit right there that it affects the Earth's magnetic fields. Here we compile 143 distinct pairs of repeating earthquakes, many within 16 multiplets, built from 121 earthquakes between 1991 and 2023 in the South Sandwich Islands. We analyzed their inner core penetrating PKIKP waves recorded on the medium aperture arrays in northern North America. We document that many multiplets exhibit waveforms that change and then revert at later times to match earlier events. The matching waveforms reveal times at which the inner core reoccupies the same position relative to the mantle, as it did at some time in the past. The pattern of matches together with previous studies demonstrates that the inner core gradually super rotated from 2003 to 2008, and then from 2008 to 2023, sub rotated two to three times more slowly back through the same path. These matches enable precise and unambiguous tracking of inner core progression and regression, resolve different rates of forward and backward motion, suggest that new models will be necessary for the dynamics between the inner core, outer core, and mantle. There you go. The new findings, this is from CNN.com. The new findings also confirm the changes in rotational speed follow a 70-year cycle, said study co-author Dr. John Fidal. Dean's Professor of Earth Science at the University of Southern California's Dornsief College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. We've been arguing about this for 20 years, and I think this nails it, Fidal said. I think we've ended the debate on whether the inner core moves and what's been its pattern for the last couple of decades. Not all are convinced that the matter is settled, and how a slowdown of the Earth's inner core might affect our planet is still open for debate. Some experts say Earth's magnetic field could come into play. It's buried approximately 3,220 miles below the Earth's surface. The so if, if this is true, the solid metal inner core is surrounded by a liquid metal outer core. The inner core is made mostly of iron and nickel. It's estimated to be as hot as the surface of the sun, which is about 9,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The Earth's magnetic fields yank at the solid ball of hot metal, making it spin. At the same time, the gravity and flow of the fluid outer core mantle drag at the core. Over many decades, the push and pull of these forces caused variations in the core's rotational speed. Vidal said, the sloshing of metal-rich fluid in the outer core generates electrical currents that power Earth's magnetic field, which protects our planet from deadly solar radiation. Though the Earth's inner core direct influence on the magnetic field is unknown, scientists had previously reported in 2023 that a slower spinning core could potentially affect it also fractionally shorten the length of a day. By tracking seismic waves from earthquakes that have passed through the Earth's inner core along similar paths since 1964, the authors of the 2023 study found that the spin followed a 70-year cycle. By the 1970s, the Earth's inner core was spinning a bit faster than the planet. It slowed about 2008, then from, 20, then from 2008 to 2023, began moving slightly in reverse relative to the mantle. There you go. Here's the paper. I'll leave the links in the video description box. Here's the PDF. In Grindavik, Iceland, concerns are growing among scientists that a volcano, which has erupted several times since the end of last year, could erupt again in weeks, putting the seaside town of Grindavik on alert for more impacts from lava flows. The Icelandic Meteorological Office, in a recent update, shows the magma has been flowing into the Svartsengi Reservoir beneath the Earth's surface and has reached the lower limit of magma that was lost during the last eruption that began at the end of May. Assuming a similar volume of magma needed to be recharged to build up enough in the system to trigger the next event, 
geodetic modeling indicates that there is a very high probability that this will occur within the next three weeks, the IMO said. See it blocking roads right here. As of July 17, 2024, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano is not erupting, and there is no lava or lava glow. Earthquake activity beneath the summit and upper east rip zone has also decreased slightly in the past 24 hours. It erupted last in September of 2023 for a week and in June 2024. It had brief eruptions in the southwest rift. So are you prepared, not scared? Tell you what, it's always good to be prepared, not scared, right? I think so. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Hit that bell for all notifications. Check us out over on Patreon and leakproject.com for exclusive content, long format interviews. You want to join us for future podcasts on a daily basis, yes. Just check back daily. You might as well check back daily because we do podcasts pretty much every single day. If you don't get the notifications, make it a part of your daily routine. Do something nice for somebody. Be excellent to each other. Hit the bell. Be well. And be the change the world needs to see.